and what we hope is a renewed commitment to be the best version of yourself. I have made that commitment and if you make the commitment and others join in, then Jamaica will indeed be the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. So what are you waiting on? Make the pledge today. Your favorite magazine program continues with a word of advice, so stay with us. Life is all about making decisions. Choosing from a number of options to do a particular thing, which may result in a specific outcome. It can be difficult, but there are four things you can do to help make that decision. Stop. Check out what's happening and remind yourself to think before acting. Think. Make sure you're aware of the choices, all the advantages and disadvantages. Then think about the consequences. Act. Choose the best option and do something about it. Review. Finally, review what you have done and determine if it was good or bad. That way, you'll be in a better position to make the next decision, whether big or simple. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, January 7. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is reporting a 19.9% .9 reduction in four major crimes for 2018. This represents 360 less murders, 331 less shootings, 60 fewer rapes and 54 fewer aggravated assaults when compared to 2017. There was also a decrease in the number of robberies by 191 and break-ins by 47. However, larceny went up by six. The JCF was also able to take 720 illegal firearms and 11,227 rounds of ammunition off the streets. Meanwhile, areas previously and currently under the state of public emergency saw significant reduction in major crimes for 2018. According to figures from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, St. James had 239 fewer murders and 150 fewer shootings than it did in the previous year. The parish has been under a state of public emergency since January 18 of last year, and the enhanced security measure will come to an end on the 31st of this month. Collectively, shootings in sections of Kingston and St. Andrew reduced by 219 and murders by 47. This is attributed to the imposed September 23 state of emergency, which comes to an end today, January 7. Meanwhile, the St. Catherine North Police Division had 56 fewer shootings and 39 fewer murders for the same period. The nine-month state of emergency for this area ended last Wednesday. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the enhanced security measure allowed the government to disrupt criminal intent, opportunity and means. A major tool has been removed from the toolkit, but our motivation has not been in any way impacted. We are going to work with what we have even harder. He has since announced that the security forces will maintain increased presence in the targeted areas to secure the gains made. In fact, what we're going to do now in St. James and in Spanish Town and in Kingston is what we were doing before we declared the state of emergency. We will have our soldiers there with the police. There are going to be mass mobilization. We're going to be doing all our patrols. We're going to be doing all the same thing but we are going to be doing it with the reduced capability. Ten judges have been promoted to serve in higher positions in the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court. On January 4, Hillary Phillips was sworn in to act as President of the Court of Appeal effective January 21. In the ceremony at King's House, David Fraser was also appointed to act as a judge of the Court of Appeal. Justice Phillips and Fraser's appointment both take effect on January 21. And Jennifer Straw, Carol Edwards, and Nicole Foster Pusey have also been appointed judges of the Court of Appeal, effective January 14. Lisa Palmer Hamilton, Andrea Thomas, and Judith Pusey took the oath to serve as puny judges, while Sharon Barnes is to act as puny judge. Tanya Mott Tuller Reed has been appointed to act as master in chambers. Their appointments took effect today. Welcome to the judiciary, and I 
and the other judges of the Supreme Court welcome you and look forward to your long and distinguished service there and offer your full and complete support. While congratulating the new appointees, Governor General Sir Patrick Allen urged them to carry out their duties with integrity. There is no facet of our lives, whether in families, communities, government, industry or labor, that is beyond the reach of the rule of law and the efficient exercise of the judicial process. I am sure you will live up to the expectation shared by all of us here, as well as others who know of your professionalism and your record of work. The Ministry of Local Government and the National Housing Trust have signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the upgrading and expansion of the island's infirmaries. The agreement, which has been under discussion for a few months now, was officially signed last Thursday at the Ministry's offices. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says it will help to stem the problem of homeless persons seeking refuge at hospitals despite being discharged. The NHT has provided $220 million to upgrade and build new facilities at various infirmaries. Meanwhile, the National Health Fund and the Chase Fund will collectively provide $500 million to expand the social programs at infirmaries. Minister McKenzie says government will increase its efforts to tackle the issue of persons living on the streets. And finally, a 13-year-old boy who was suspended from school for an undetermined period of time is being allowed back into the classroom due to the Ministry of Education's intervention. A statement from the ministry says the decision for the teen to return to school on January 7 came after dialogue with the principal of Little London High School. Education Minister Senator Royal Reed is also expected to visit the Westmoreland Institution on Tuesday, January 8. The ministry's statement asserts that discipline is an integral part of the personal development of students, but adds that government firmly supports efforts to engage in full dialogue when issues arise with youth and in educational institutions. Having had the discussion with the principal, the ministry says its guidance unit, led by senior education officers, will also meet with the teen, his mother, and the principal, along with the school's guidance counselor. That meeting is to resolve and devise intervention strategies for behavior modification. Senior education officers will also make plans for the school's next professional development day to focus on behavior modification interventions, along with effectively communicating with teenagers and disgruntled parents. Meanwhile, in an effort to better manage and monitor reports to the regional office, an electronic system is being implemented to track cases and ensure a more timely resolution. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. I'm deeply concerned by the number of Jamaicans killed on our roads. Safety on our roads is our responsibility. Jamaicans, drivers, passengers, motorcyclists, and pedestrians, slow down. Observe the rules of the road. Be courteous. Drive defensively. Be considerate. Buckle up. Wear a helmet. The careless overtaker is only rushing to the undertaker. Not observing the rules of the road could cost you your life and that of your loved ones. I encourage all road users to take special care as we use public thoroughfares. The life you save may be your own. Remember, your family wants you to arrive alive. The office of the Prime Minister was a flurry of activity in 2018. Catch the highlights next. I am here to put Jamaica on a new trajectory, a new pathway to progress and prosperity. The government will implement measures and stick with them for as long as it takes to bring genuine security to your communities. A state of public emergency is now in effect for the parish of St. James. Within the St. Catherine North Police Division, within specified boundaries, encompassing parts of the Kingston Central, Kingston Western, 
and the St. Andrew South Police Divisions. Basically, the, the two zones that we have are what we would call now the test cases. So yes, there are more zones coming. These interventions have proven themselves. The decline in the national murder rate is now 21%. What we're doing here today is ensuring that we make an investment in securing our borders, increasing our domain awareness. Today is a celebration of all that is right with Jamaica. The training that you have received and the exposure that you have received should now be internalized so that you hold your head up high wherever you go. The HOPE program continued to boost youth engagement in 2018. Over 12,000 trainees were enrolled between April and October. 12,600 from the Unattached Youth Program were also engaged. And with February's signing of the three billion US dollar Gansu Industrial Park Agreement, even more jobs are expected. Groundbreaking for the Economic Zone Industrial Park is scheduled for this to be done in December 2018, which is a working target for both Jamaica and China. The industrial park includes the 2.5 billion US dollar Vernum Field Aerotropolis project. In 2018, 300 million dollars was dispersed to start preparatory work at the Clarendon based site. It is to bring together multiple commercial activities, including aviation-related and global trade logistics, all strategically linked to an operating space that facilitates the ease of doing business, greater economic efficiencies, and the achievement of a more attractive and sustainable development. The National Housing Trust delivered 984 houses in 2018. NHT is doing every single thing possible while maintaining its financial integrity to give you the opportunity to own your own home. In August, the entity welcomed Lennox Channer as its new chairman. And shortly after, the NHD strategic review report to reform and expand home ownership at the agency was tabled in the House of Representatives. Public sector transformation was fast-tracked in 2018 with February's signing of a 160 million US dollar loan agreement with the IDB. Jamaica now leads the region in developing its framework to become a digital society. Another 68 million US dollar loan helped the state support its implementation of the National Identification Systems NITS. We are 90% complete with all the business processes needed to implement NITS. It's nothing nefarious, nothing to uh, in any way erode the privacy of the citizen, what we are trying to do is to strengthen government so that we can better serve you. At the office of the Prime Minister, Sancia Bennett Templer was appointed the new Permanent Secretary. The Prime Minister continued his media engagements and also meeting with Jamaicans from near and far. We are coming to your community to discuss it with you, to engage you, and to build a better Jamaica. The new Parliament Building Design Competition was launched in 2018, and it's now at a stage where persons can view the designs. Assuming oversight of the energy portfolio, the Prime Minister installed a new board and a new general manager at Petrojam. My role is to ensure that you get the appropriate policy direction and ultimately to ensure that there is good management of the organization. A review commission was also appointed in 2018. On receipt of the Auditor General's report, the Prime Minister ordered a forensic review of Petrojam. Whatever issues are raised, the government will act to address them. This government has nothing to hide, and we are not shielding anyone, and we are not covering up anything. International energy agreements signed with the US Mexico and Spain also boosted energy initiatives on the island. This will allow the country to increase its renewable energy target to 50% by the year 2030. The Energy Ministry also distributed solar-powered lamps to communities and households vulnerable to fire from candle usage. 
We are not a perfect government, but we are striving to be the best government for you and your children. God bless you. Record low unemployment, concrete action in protecting the environment, major infrastructural advancements, accelerated developments in housing. Like the government in 2018, we want you to action your prosperity by engaging in a productive endeavor. Whether it's starting a business, going back to school, closing on a house or buying a car, the time is now. Here's one bright idea from a growth area of the Jamaican economy. We normally clean this system on a daily basis by using a shovel to gather the feces across the slots. Some of the feces normally falls into the slot and the rest that doesn't fall in, we have a two inch hole at the end of the slotted area where we push all of the feces into it. The pit system for the slotted system is normally built with a degree of slope that, that is sloped to a, a vent area where it is released into the biodigester. What if I told you there's an easier way to do this? Students from the Ebony Park Arts Academy in Maple and Clarendon have designed a unique way, modern if I may say, of effectively cleaning your pig pen. A design which they had on display at the recently held Denby Agricultural Show. Take a look. This is a pig pen, but not just any pig pen. This is a hydraulic slotted pig pen. Normally, pig pen aren't made to just move up and down. They don't have any up and wide, up and down movements. So with this pen pen now, we make it that you can, it can use the hydraulic system and let it go up for better sanitization of the pen itself. So this pen is con connected to a biodigester. This biodigester is a system where the waste slash the effluent from this pig pen can be converted to a gas called methane, which can be used like a fuel in the home, or it can be used to help with the maintenance of this because it can be used to power this system itself. As said before, this is a hydraulic slotted pig pen. Therefore, after a while, there will be a buildup of feces and bacteria, excessive bacteria beneath the pen. Therefore, the the hydraulic system would come in place because this would allow us to clean beneath the pen effectively. Before we clean the pen, beneath the pen, we place a fiberglass beneath the pen to prevent the excessive feces, the feces and waste material from passing through because we don't want it to touch you while we are beneath the pen cleaning. So this is when the pen goes up and you, it will allow you to clean beneath the pen effectively to reduce the amount of bacteria and have a safe, safe and disease-free disease -free pen. Afterwards, after you have done cleaning, you place the pen back into its designated area and, and remove the fiberglass and sanitize it. And that's, that's the pen. Our course is general agriculture. In general agriculture, we do with the husbandry practice and the cleaning of pens and sanitation and so, and so forth. But we have slatted pen down there. And we have noticed that, you know what, with the slatted pen now, after a period of time, you may have a accumulation of bacteria because of small pieces of feces here and there. And remember, the swine slash the pig are some animals which they are easily, they easily catch disease and are easily infected. So that is why and how we come up with this invention. We don't have lots of difficulty because our senior instructor, Sir Calvin Wills, has supplied us with most of the resources needed. But the, the challenge that we faced was mainly making this component, making the up and down movement without the use of electricity. So we had to think about it throughout. We, we, we just buck up and some syringes. 
So what we did was, we noticed that when you connect two syringes with a tube, when you push one down, the other one will go up. So we, we think about it and say, mainly we can use this as the hydraulic component of it using water. Like a liquid, you can use any liquid, not a too thick liquid, a liquid which can flow freely and make the movement. So we have the tendency to connect the, uh, the syringe to each corner, to four corners, and to these syringe, we connect them on the framing. So when we have the tendency to push down the syringe, the pen will go up. And when we push up the syringe, the pen will go down. So that is our Ill, um, hydraulic component of the system. Youth involvement in agriculture is top priority for the government. And with a system like this one, designed to integrate modern technology and agriculture, what more could you possibly ask for? My name is Nikisha Lindsay, I'm the Director of Community Services at the National Youth Service. In total, we engaged a little over 100 young persons. The NYS team really embraced uh, this, this new initiative. It's new in that they never did this before. And um, we talk about it, they talk about it as a charity thing before, but for them now they get empowerment as actually given skills and opportunities for young persons with disabilities. We have been privileged to go through this experience with all of these young persons. It has been both a learning experience for us, the staff at the NYS, as well as the young persons. We saw the young persons developing their own personal and professional skills, but for us it was a real learning experience. We got to really understand some of the challenges that a person with intellectual disability would face on a regular basis. Um, Thank you for the National Youth Service for helping us to get a job for us that we can just hold it and just continue and just continue working. Thank you, parents. And, and we can talk to parents to us. <laughs> The National Youth Service, empowering Jamaica's young people. Government's vision for Jamaica is all about inclusive growth from all sectors and all communities. She had her first child at 16 and the second just past the age of 19. Her life was going well, until, at age 26, she started to experience excruciating pain with abnormally heavy periods. She dismissed it. Maybe it's stress, a miscalculation of the period start date, until one night, the pain became too unbearable to ignore. When I went to the doctor, she said, do a pap smear. When I did the pap smear, three weeks after, she called me and said, what they see? Passmere don't come back normal. I have to go and do a colposcopy. Her doctor advised her to see a gynecologist. At the gynecologist, a test was done and an emergency colposcopy ordered. A colposcopy is the insertion inside of you with a camera and all the tests to see what's happening. And when they did the, the biopsy and everything and it come back, I was literally at a stage three cervical cancer. At 26 with two children and at a stage three cancer, all you hear about cancer is death. Determined to fight, she weighed her options. Her treatment of choice was radiation and chemotherapy at the Kingston Public Hospital. Radiation burns your body. Can you imagine you cannot have a shower for at least three to four months. You just have to cut and do everything. You cannot eat normal food because if you do, you're going to have constant diarrhea or vomiting or your system start to clean. But thank God for KPH, there were some good doctors there. Very good doctors who encouraged me, who loved me through this as I was one of the youngest young girls at KPH at that time. 
we were going through this and doing this treatment. And I said, okay, I'm going to eat. And I went through it. I prayed, thank God. He had a plan for me and I'm here today. And I am here with, with this team saying, taking responsibility. It's not the government to take responsibility for you. I'm going to encourage parents to encourage your children to take care of them, to protect them from this act before it's too late. Some of us don't show signs. But look at me today. Thanks to KPH. Thanks to the good doctors. Thanks that. Thanks that at 26 I didn't have any money. So what would I do? Don't I would I die? And I hear people talk about the system. No. They are there to help us. I pay a little money. That's why I'm standing here today with the grace of God. Amen. Right? So go to the clinic and go with a good attitude and talk to your nurse and your doctor. And you will see how it work out. So remember, take responsibility for who? You and your Okay. For more information on cervical cancer caused by the human papilloma virus, Call 888-1LOVE, that's 888-663-5683. You may also email hpvinfo at moh.gov.jm. Cervical cancer, caused by the human papillomavirus, HPV, is a major public health concern in Jamaica. Almost 50% of the women diagnosed each year die from this preventable disease. To prevent cervical cancer and save lives, the Ministry of Health is providing the bivalent HPV vaccine to girls ages 9 to 14 years free of cost. Parents, give your girls a fighting chance against this deadly disease. The bivalent HPV vaccine is safe and provides 90 to 100% protection against HPV type 16 and 18, which are responsible for most HPV-caused cancers. Call the Ministry of Health's toll-free line 1-888-1-LOVE or 1-888-663-5683 for more information or email us at hpvinfo at moh.gov.jm. You can also find further information on the website moh.gov.jm as well as the Ministry of Health's social media channels. And that's how we close out Jamaica Magazine for today. Be sure to join us tomorrow for another informative program. If you're unable to watch us on TV, catch us at your leisure online. There's gis.gov.jm, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, our mobile app. Remember, don't just make plans, make them a reality. All the best. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.